windows are closed. Ah, good. So what are those bits of business? Well, uh, they uh, both occur in the final scene, as it were, back to back. You see, an Inspector Hubbard has come over, and uh, Willard has spilled the beans. So Julian goes berserk, and he shoots Inspector Hubbard in the arm, in the left arm, but he only has one bullet in the gun. So he's trying to get to a wall so he can get a weapon and finish the job. Now the question becomes, can a one-armed inspector in reasonably good condition stop a two-armed middle-aged playwright from going where he wants to go? Now the answer had better be no. So uh, why don't we try it out, right, right out here. I'll, uh, I'll be Julian, you be Inspector Hubbard. All right, well, left arm out of commission? Exactly. Okay, now I'm going to try to get by you and get to one of the weapons on the wall, okay? Oh, come on, Cliff, you can do better than that. I think that'll look convincing. Oh, not even to a theater crowd. Now, come on, let's try it again. you got to try to stop him. Maybe I should be Julian. I, I didn't want to rip your shirt. Oh, come on. This is a five-year-old shirt. It's not that get in the way of, of us trying to become very wealthy and successful playwrights, huh? Why can't we just let the director and the actors figure all this because out? Because that's not the way professional playwrights operate, dumb dumb. Professional playwrights do not submit a scene until they know that everything in that scene is doable and real. Now, come on. Let's show them why Brule and Anderson are going to go down in theatrical history, OK? Come on. Here we go. Ah. Ah. Oh, good. That's perfect. I get to the weapon. Voila, it works, huh? Look at your shirt. Ah, don't worry about it. Now, look, now, this next bit of business, oh, it's a lot less strenuous. And, and it is uh, a lot shorter, too. I'll be the inspector. You'll be Julian. Uh, go over and get the axe off the wall. Good. Uh, that, that looks funny, the way you're holding. It feels natural this way. Try it another way. But, uh, they go back to the way you had it before. That's right. Okay, now, uh, if you would come down and put the axe down right there on the floor. And stand up very slowly. It's time we said our goodbyes. Death Trap is over. This is Theater Verite. The gun from Gunpoint. Only this time, it's without the blanks that we had at the dear old Lyceum Theater. No, these are real bullets, courtesy of Messieurs Remington. I loaded it last night while you were asleep. You see, I really don't want that play to be written, Cliff. Although nothing can be proven. There's a lot that can be talked about, and I really don't want to wind up with Washington secretaries and ex-lovers of ex-presidents and happy hookers and happily hooked in the National Bad Taste Exposition. And I really couldn't think of a, another way to keep you from setting me up in a centrally located booth there. See, I talked to Porter this evening. Told him I was feeling a little uneasy, and I asked him to investigate you, and he... Uh, he said a few blots turned up on your record, precisely the ones you told me about in Hartford, but he said they're enough to uh, justify my uneasiness. So I came home, and I dismissed you. You became abusive and violent, and Mrs. Tendorf's three-week-old premonition finally came to pass. Luckily, I was able to get to this gun, which I have a license and a right to use in self-defense. Sure beats digging up the vegetable patch, doesn't it? You know, Cliff, I'm going to miss you. If you hadn't succumbed to thrilleritis malignancy in what is surely one of the most acute cases known to man, we might have actually become the team of Brule and Anderson. As it is, we will simply be only Brule. I'm out of dialogue. Here go. What can I say? I I'm not going to beg you. Oh, I thought you might uh, tell me you'd run away and become a steam fitter or something. Oh, would you believe me? No. So I'm just going to have to hope you can take pity on a pretty face. Going to miss you, Cliff. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sydney.